morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Sir Meerkat, and welcome back to the Moto Meerkat channel. In 2020, Haas had their worst season to date, scoring only three points across the 17 race season. That was thanks to a 10th place by Kevin Magnussen at the Hungarian Grand Prix and a 9th place from Roman Grosjean at the Eiffel Grand Prix. Now Grosjean has been at the team since its creation in 2016 and Magnussen joined the year after replacing Gutierrez for the 2017 season. But over this long time that they've been at the team, the results haven't particularly been improving and that's why some people including myself began to question whether they're the right people for the job at Haas. And many fans did believe that the driver lineup was overdue for a change. Don't get me wrong, both Kevin and Roman have had some very solid performance despite Ericsson's best efforts. But finally, the American team has done just that, kicking both Roman and Kevin to the curb and bringing in young talent from Formula 2. The German, Mick Schumacher, and the much-loved Russian, Nikita Mazepin. Now, I won't speak on Mazepin too much in this video as I've already got enough hot water over him so we could just sort of push that to the side but obviously as we know a lot of people have been campaigning to get him kicked out of the team this doesn't actually affect what i'm going to be talking about in today's video as if he is replaced it's going to be by fittipaldi or ilot ilot being a rookie and fittipaldi has raced in two races in 2020 but i'd still count him basically as a rookie. So for today's video, I thought I'd have a quick look at what could change at Haas with the introduction of these two young drivers and how that may affect the fortune of the team as a whole. So let's get into it. Now Haas have had so much bad luck over the five years that they've been in the sport. But some people do say that you create your own good or bad luck, which I definitely think could be said for some of the situations that Haas found themselves in. Obviously, they had the wheel nut disaster in 2018 with both drivers having to retire. Now at the time, obviously we saw it in the Netflix documentary, it seemed like it kind of reunified the team and brought them closer together with Roman comforting a lot of the pit crew that were clearly very distraught from the situation that happened. And it looked like moving forward that they would possibly do better in these kind of situations, but it didn't kind of really seem to do anything. We saw it 2019 at the Australian Grand Prix again. The same mistake was repeated with Grosjean where his left front was not on properly and he again had to retire. Do the mechanics not realise that when you're down under, the wheel nut does up the other way round? Silly sausages. The Haas has just generally been quite an unlucky car to be honest with their mechanical issues seemingly getting worse before they actually get any better. In the first year that the team was competing in 2016, out of the 40 race starts that the drivers made, they retired from eight of them and then in 2020 out of the 34 races that they start they retired from nine of them an increase of 6.5 percent however in 2016 out of those eight retirements two of them were due to collisions and six of them were due to mechanical failures four of those six being break issues now in 2020 four of the nine were from collisions and five were from mechanical issues two of those five being because of break issues. Now, Steiner and Hass's original and earlier opinions were that with these more experienced drivers, the car could continue to improve and Haas could hopefully begin to jump up the pecking order of the grid. But this has not happened. Now, with the data that I've just given you there, looking at that alone, we could argue that the Haas car has improved with one less mechanical issue and a slightly lower percentage of those issues being down to the brakes, which Haas have obviously continuously struggled with. But the drivers, the so-called experienced drivers, instead of becoming more consistent with their age, have actually doubled the number of retirements because of collisions. So maybe it's the right time to remove them and try out some fresh faces. We also, in 2020, had the first of the Haas and Ferrari power unit issues. Now, we'll talk about this in a lot more detail a little bit later on when we talk about the car. But firstly, let's have a look at the driver and team principal dynamic for 2021. <music> 
As we know, there's always been tensions kind of bubbling away in the background at Haas, mainly due to the frustration that they've had with the car and not achieving the results which they feel they deserve. Also, the fact of having William Story somehow involved in your business probably doesn't help with the stress levels either. But how can we forget when everyone threw their toys out of the pram seriously at the 2019 Silverstone Grand Prix after Roman and Kevin ended up colliding? And due to this mistake, both drivers would end up retiring from the race. What was that I said about creating your own luck? Luckily, Netflix, our favorite people, were there to capture the ensuing chaos in the paddock. The sore arguments between both of the drivers and the team principal, Gunther Steiner, who really doesn't like his door being smashed. Don't be so mad, Gunther. He only blew the bloody doors off. <laughs> Now, I don't particularly feel that Steiner deals with these high-pressure situations particularly well. He has quite good and abrasive banter at times, I feel, which I think takes a little bit of getting used to for the drivers, but is generally coming from a place of affection. This can be seen at times where he's messing with Roman, saying, it all depends on how much you crash the car this year, Roman. Now, Grosjean is quite a, quite a level-headed bloke, and generally, I think, a really, really nice guy. And in the clip, he takes it pretty well. He takes the joke okay. But other drivers that may not be so jolly may not take it so well and may not enjoy it being teased quite as much. Because as an F1 driver, you need to have a slightly oversized ego, at least, to believe that you can be the fastest driver in the world. And I think you can pretty easily argue that this is definitely more noticeable with younger drivers. Take Sebastian Vettel's younger years at Red Bull, where he had little to no respect for the older and more experienced Mark Webber, as Seb only really saw him as a roadblock to his overall goal rather than an ally. Now, as we know, both Haas newbies are pretty young, only just being able to go out for a drink after their round at the Circuit of the Americas. And this relationship that they will form between themselves and Gunter could be a recipe for disaster, in my opinion, if they're not really, really careful. To be fair, Mick Schumacher has been relatively good when it comes to involving himself in controversy. What's the opposite of like father, like son? But Nikita, on the other hand, let's just say he's a bit of a dickhead. Quite the understatement, I know. Hopefully his ego has been checked at least a little bit thanks to his recent actions on social media. But the fact that he got away with it without any kind of reprimand leads me to believe otherwise. But despite their flaws, both drivers definitely have bucket loads of talent, which is shown in their junior careers, which I'll hand over to Mr. John Warren to talk a little bit more about. Take it away, you Bentley bandit. While Mazepin and Schumacher may be very different drivers off track, they both have one thing in common. They're extremely fast racing drivers. In an F2 championship that came down to the final round to decide the winner, the two drivers both managed to take multiple wins and were both in the championship fight for the latter half of the season. Over their two seasons in F2, both drivers have two poles to their name, although Mick Schumacher clearly has the upper hand in the races, taking 11 podiums and three wins to Mazepin's six podiums and two wins. One thing to note, however, is that both of these drivers' two poles were both achieved in 2019 as a result of the reverse grid sprint races, so with that in mind it's clear to see that neither of them is quite the qualifying king. I'm sure you're already aware that Schumacher eventually took the title, finishing 14 points clear of Callum Eilat and over 50 points clear of Nikita Mazepin, but it wouldn't be fair to say that Mazepin was the slower driver. While Mick chose to drive sensibly and avoid getting into silly incidents, Mazepin was more aggressive in his demeanour and took wins through raw pace and aggressive moves. In Formula 1, the minimum cost of breaking a front wing could be as high as $300,000 so there's a lot to be said for keeping your nose clean. For a team as strapped for cash as Haas, by having a driver burn through front wings and pick up penalties every other race could spell death. However, Mazepin's huge injection of cash will no doubt keep the team afloat, no matter how much they lose by repairing front wings. But I haven't been asked here to rant about Mr. Crashy Crashy's ability to break things, have I? Mazepin's junior career hasn't been particularly noteworthy aside from his third place finish in the F3 Asian Championship during this season's abnormally large off-season. Schumacher's career was, on the other hand, much more fruitful, taking multiple top three places in junior championships, including winning the 2018 F3 Championship and, of course, winning the 2020 F2 Championship. So what can they both bring to the team? Well, Mazepin's is obvious. He has more money under his mattress than the average person will make in their entire life, and naturally this has played a key role in ensuring he gets a 2021 F1 seat. 
His father's Ural Chem and Ural Cali companies will no doubt feature prominently on the 2021 Haas car, and this is fairly important seeing as Mazepin's behaviour off track has prompted all the rest of the sponsors to fuck. Schumacher's rewards are less obvious comparatively. While he does also have his own set of sponsors, the most high profile of which being a company by the name of Deutsche Vermögensberatung, which translates as the German Wealth Advisory Service, or in other words, it translates as more money for Haas. As well as this, the Schumacher name will no doubt bring more sponsors to the team, eager to be associated with the son of the second most successful F1 driver of all time. That is, of course, unless Mazepin doesn't do something so appalling that they refuse to sponsor... Oh, wait. Cheers for coming on the channel, JW. Always love to have you here. If you guys have not subscribed to JW already, I'll be sure to leave this link down in the description below, so definitely click that after you're done watching this video. But finally, we talk about the car. Quite a key element of racing in Formula 1, I think we could all say. And Haas's car has never been particularly good now, has it? They've had continuous mechanical issues that they just can't seem to get their head around. As I mentioned earlier, they haven't got to grip with their brake systems really at all and seem to be kind of blindingly uh, attempting to just shoot fish in a barrel uh, trying to fix these issues and that hasn't really worked. And for 2020, as we know, it's got even worse as the Ferrari power unit is now so underpowered due to their possible cheating scandal the previous year and their botched fixes of that. And despite this reducement in power, the reliability of the power unit has seemed to have got worse as well. So a double whammy for Haas there. See if their luck can hopefully turn around a bit in uh, in 2021. Obviously, both Roman and Kevin have expressed their hatred for the car, how it ends up overworking itself and thus just destroying its own tyres and its general pace. And as I said there, they find it super difficult to keep their tyres within any sort of window with the working heat levels. And thanks to these concoction of issues, the car just seems to be practically undrivable. These guys that are saying it's undrivable are the ones that are experienced with the car. They've had years trying to get their heads around it and still just can't seem to do it. So how are the rookies going to find this, let's be honest, absolute dog of a car? Only time will tell, I guess. So to conclude today's video, do I believe that introducing two new rookies into the Haas setup for 2021 is going to assist them and help them to move up the pecking order of the grid? I'm going to go with a hard no on that one. Although the introduction of young talent could prove useful for the team in the long run, having two join at the same time, especially with one being quite the hothead and allowing for his fist to do the talking sometimes after the race, I do feel like the naivety could be a bit of a struggle for Steiner to handle and his abrasiveness could quite easily lead to a blow up at Haas. So I wouldn't be surprised in 2021 to see a lot more retirements and possibly a lot more arguments. So they need to be really, really careful with that inter-team relationship to make sure it's all blossoming nicely and the drivers are more easily getting used to the car and getting fed in and they're not getting really, really pressured from the off to put in incredible performances and bring this car up way higher than it can do. Also, I would say that these two drivers that are coming in, don't get me wrong, are super, super talented, but the main factor has always been the car in the downfall of the team, with, as I said, continuing brake issues, power unit issues, and just a general lack of pace. So it's definitely unlikely that the 2021 Haas is going to be significantly better, and they're going to do significantly better in the championship with this sh car. So until that is all fixed on the mechanical side, I just can't see the Haas team making any sort of strides forward that they need to to put themselves into any sort of contention to be making serious points consistently through the season. So there we have it. Those were mine and JW's thoughts on the 2021 rookie lineup for Haas. Now, whether you agree or disagree with us, be sure to leave me your opinions in the comments below. I do love reading them and debating with you guys, but obviously keep it classy, please. Drop a like down below if you did enjoy the video. I do really appreciate that. And subscribe to the Moto Meerkat channel as well, because I make lots of regular motorsport content that you're not going to want to miss. And while you're down in that sort of vicinity, again, Again, be sure to go over and subscribe to JW as well because he just makes absolutely quality content. So I would highly recommend it. And lastly from me, don't forget to tune in this Sunday, the 27th of December for my Project Cars 2 open lobby, a little Christmas special for you to enjoy. So really look forward to that. And that will obviously be streamed right here on the channel, 1 p.m. Sunday. Don't miss it. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching another video on the channel and I'll see all of you meerkats later. Goodbye, guys.